Hello, this is Kristen L, or just Kristen. Welcome to my channel. I talk about science fiction and fantasy books and the awards that go with them. And this is my second wrap up for the month of, are we in July? God. And this is my second weekly wrap up for the month of July. I finished five books this week, which is a lot considering that in the past couple of weeks, I think I've only managed to finish like two things, but it's because I've been reading so many things and I finally just like finished up a bunch of them. And also four of the things <laughs> that I finished this week are like short, like novellas or um, one of them is a comic book, which was a pretty quick read. So let's, let's talk about it. Um, the first thing that I finished was We Shall Sing a Song Into the Deep by Andrew Kelly Stewart. I'm completely unfamiliar with this author. I don't know anything about them. I don't know if this is their first book or what, but I will say that I really enjoyed this one. It's a novella. It was published this year, so it will be uh, eligible for awards next year. And this one is definitely on my radar as one that I'll want to keep in mind if I end up nominating for the Hugos or Locus Awards. It was very dark and just really gripping and immersive. The world is really well, like it feels like you're, it has a feel. This world has a very distinct vibe to it and it was really fun to enter into that world every time I picked up this book to read. I don't know if this is a spoiler, it's like a very, very minor spoiler. It might just kind of a descriptor, so just quick cover your ears, I'll wave when I'm done. This is an alternate history. And you don't really find that out until like maybe midway through the book, but it is an alternate history and the setting is a nuclear sub and it's basically a cult. Okay. So I don't, I guess I don't really want to say much more than that, except that it is really dark. Um, definitely there are some trigger warnings if, if that's something you want to look. I, I do include those in my reviews on Goodreads, so if you're interested in content warnings, etc. Be sure to follow me on Goodreads. With the disclaimer, of course, that I'm definitely not an expert and I always feel like there's probably a ton of content warnings I'm missing when I do include them in my reviews, but there's some there at least, so you can get kind of a basic idea. Also, if you if you go to um, Storygraph, they always have loads of content warnings on all of theirs. It's part of the review system there. Okay, so I also finished Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. And this was a novel. It just came out this year, so I guess it will be eligible for words next year. This feels like a little bit more on the literary side than the sci-fi genre side, but it's definitely a science fiction. It's also one of those books, and I think I really just tend to like the style of book. It's one of those books where you kind of slowly figure out what's going on. So I also don't know in this instance how much I should be telling you. I don't want to give anything away. Um, Basically, you know nothing when you start and you just slowly, slowly, slowly start to learn. And it's an absolute delight. I, The prose is gorgeous. You just, it's effortless. You read this effortlessly. It just is so immersive. It's a futuristic world. I think it's a near, I, I, just, I should not be saying anything. It's better to just not know anything going into this. There's, there's kind of themes of love and relationships and what they mean and then there's also this very it's very subtle everything about this book is so subtle but there is also definitely a theme of technology and the degree to which it helps us and the degree to which it doesn't the degree to which it's a threat and the degree to which it separates people and creates classes and society that weren't there before difficult choices for people but definitely I love this I highly recommend it it was a lot of fun I did listen to the audiobook and it was a delight to listen to the audiobook the reader has just a beautiful very soothing voice I really enjoyed it next I finished Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire and I started this like forever ago and so I finally just finished it it's a novella so it's a really really quick read I just needed to give it some focus and concentration and then it, it finished up really fast. I feel very whatever about it. It didn't really do anything major for me, but it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It felt really YA, honestly. It's it's about 
teenagers at a school. And I really like the concept for this a lot. The concept is just that there's these kids that found doorways to other worlds and they fit in these other worlds so perfectly. They just love it. And for whatever reason, they ended up back in our world. And so they're, the goal of their life is just to find these doorways back into the worlds that they feel like they belong in. And so it's basically this whole book. There's a murder mystery. There's, you know, and it's, like I said, it's totally fine. There's some really fun characters. I love the descriptions of the different worlds. It's just, that's really fun. So I don't not recommend it, but it also, it just, it wasn't my favorite ever. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to continue this series, but I will read the novella that just got nominated for the Hugo's I I don't feel as I think. Um, it's actually the only novella that I haven't read yet in the Hugo novella category that was nominated for this year, um, Come Tumbling Down. And I decided I'm just going to start this one without reading the in-between ones because I've heard that they do kind of stand somewhat alone. I, so I figured if I read the first one and got kind of the setup for the series, I could skip the other ones. And I don't know how accurate that is. I'll let you know. But so far, it's not... I read the first like chapter or two and it's been fine so far. I don't feel like I'm missing anything super significant because I think what I've been able to extrapolate based on, I looked at like a fan wiki or something for the series. It looks like each book kind of focuses on a different character and their world. So I think it's not a big deal if you skip some of them. But once again, I'll let you know if I get to the end of this book and really wish that I had not skipped the other ones. but. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to feel exactly the same way about this one. It's just going to be like, yeah, it was, it was fine. It didn't do anything major for me, but maybe I'll be surprised. We can hope. And then I also finished Science Proceeding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. It's super, super short, quick read, but the language is really beautiful and full of like really kind of abstract imagery. Okay, so Shannon and Cynthia did a collaborative video from That's So Poe and Book Whimsy, which I'll link below. I already linked it below in my other videos too, but they're the ones that got me interested in it. And then I was doubly interested because at the time I was doing Translate-a-thon, which is hosted by Rhea at the Book Finch, which I'll also link below all those things. I like keep linking them below because it takes so long to read everything. I talk about them in like multiple videos, but anyway, um, she's crossing a border. And when I first started reading this, I had kind of forgotten everything that Shannon and Cynthia had talked about. And they talked about this. But I just put it out of my mind because that's kind of like what I do before I read a book. I kind of try to forget everything that I know about it when I start it so I can just experience it without any, you know, outside influences. So when I first started reading it, I was like, ooh, and for some reason, I just assumed she was going to be crossing into like the underworld or the land of the dead or something. But no, nah, she's just crossing the border into the U.S. So I was like, <laughs> this is boring. But no, no, no. It was it was really good. It's really insightful. It makes it has like a lot of commentary on what it's um, the experience of immigration and you know US culture versus Latino culture or Mexican culture in particular and honestly I feel like a lot of it probably went over my head I finished it and felt like you know I probably missed a lot of like this is probably a lot deeper than I can actually appreciate but I I did appreciate a lot of it. And there was one kind of, meta I assume it's a metaphor, <laughs> that really stuck with me where one of the, I want I think I wanna say they're a Mexican person in the US. It doesn't explicitly say Mexico or the US or anything, but that's the implication that um, he's describing Americans love for baseball and he's describing how the game works. And it's pretty clear. I tried to find it. I wish I had highlighted it on my Kindle I would read it to you if I could find it again, but I don't want to spend all day looking for it. But he like basically talks about like occupying these bases and like acting like you own them and all this stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, is he talking about like literal U.S. military bases all over the world? <laughs> I think he was. I might have been reading into it too much, but it was like, whoo, burn. Like, yeah. So there's just a lot of things like that. They talk about language and I don't know. Um, Cynthia and Shannon did a great job just kind of talking about all of that stuff too. So go watch their video if you haven't done that yet. And it's beautiful prose, very short, worth reading, insightful. Yeah. 
Okay, and then finally I finished Ghost Spider Volume 1, Dog Days Are Over by Sean McGuire, and this is a graphic novel that was nominated in the graphic story category of the Hugos this year. And uh, on the whole, I just feel very, and maybe this is just how I feel about Sean McGuire's writing in general, because I haven't read very much, but what I have read, I kind of universally have this reaction to her like, oh, that was fine. I don't feel like it enriched my life whatsoever, but it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. There was, I don't know. I just, this comic was, it was a Spider Girl comic. It was just, I have nothing to say about it because it was just so blasé. Um, I don't understand what sets us apart as needing to be nominated for awards. I definitely expect all the other comics I read to be better than this, to be more interesting. It's just a superhero comic. There's nothing deep about it. There's nothing innovative about it. There's nothing super cool about it. It's just a comic. And I feel like that's probably what could be said about most superhero comics. Like they're just perfectly fine comics. I don't think this one's special. Now, I haven't finished any of the other graphic stories in this category yet, so maybe I will have a different thing to say once I've read all of those, but also I have to say I, I was let down because I just assumed because it's about a female main character and it's written by a woman that it was going to be a very feminist story, but it, it wasn't. There was nothing particularly feminist about it, and the artwork is just really sexist honestly it's very objectifying there's lots of very unrealistic booby boobs and like poses like this um so i mean i i would not recommend you go out of your way to go read this but if you like comic books why not <laughs> that's really all i have to say about that so i've also been chipping away at beowulf a new translation by well by unknown but translated by Maria Devana Headley and I've been watching the video which I said last week it was on YouTube it's not on YouTube it's on Vimeo but anyways same deal it's linked below if you want to watch it I highly recommend um, watching this video as opposed to listening to the audiobook this is the video is way better so I've been enjoying that I still have almost two hours maybe not quite I just I just need to prioritize that I haven't been able to prioritize that this week I'm still working on Firebreak by Nicole Corner Stace, and I realized last week I said it was about 20%, but as of this moment right now, I am 17%, so yeah. I'm, I'm still enjoying it. I just need to give it some like focused reading time, and hopefully I can do that this week because I have other books I'm excited to get to. I didn't really pick up Jade City at all. I want to really try to focus my eye reading time on Firebreak. Oh, I did just read, like I read like the first three pages of The Relentless Moon by Mary Robinette Cowell. I'm going to go ahead and admit I have a bad attitude about this one because I don't have fond memories of reading The Calculating Stars, so I'm expecting to not like this one. Um, with that in mind, I'm going to give myself permission to DNF if I'm really just hating it. Um, I'm only reading it because it is the only novel I haven't read in the Hugo novel category so I just want to be able to say that I at least tried all of them so I've heard a lot of people do really love this book though so I'm, I'm gonna try to give it a fair shot in non-reading types of things I've been working on the other Hugo categories too uh, my husband and I just watched Old Guard last night which is nominated in the best dramatic long form category of the Hugo Awards this year and wow we hated it we hated it. Do not recommend. It was awful. We're going to make a video kind of ranking all of the entries in the long form category. Hopefully in a few weeks. We still need to watch Tenet and then we'll go ahead and make a video together talking about it. So be watching for that. We also started She-Ra, The Princess of Power, which has an episode nominated in the short form category, which I don't even know what season we're on. Like, I don't know I think maybe five seasons, but we haven't watched any of this show. So we're starting back at the very beginning. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take us until we get to the actual episode that's been nominated. But holy cow, I have to say so far, I am loving this show. It is so wonderful. I want my daughter to watch this because it is a show just unabashedly about powerful women being powerful and cool. 
and I have to say the main character is a very stereotypical blonde blue-eyed skinny attractive woman but the other women are not all just like her <laughs> the there's another princess that's actually kind of chubby and that just makes me so happy I I just love that that she's this beautiful princess that's also chubby and then there's this guy character who actually wears like mildly revealing clothing and like I just look at him and think like eye candy like he's presented in a way that's supposed to be like attractive you know to female eyes maybe <laughs> and golly gosh I love that too just like because women are constantly portrayed as that put in that role and so seeing a guy put in that role I'm very happy about that and then there's like this flying unicorn and it's just the the artwork is pretty I I just I'm really liking it and it's kind of funny and self-aware in some ways and I definitely at this point really really want to go back and watch the original She-Ra because I just want to compare and contrast and also it looks so campy and amazing I just I'm very curious about it now so anyways yeah I'm really enjoying that um I'm also still playing Spirit Fair still have the same thoughts still enjoying it um if you want to hear more about that watch my last two journals I talk about it more there I think that's it um, maybe I should go ahead and mention that going forward for nominating for the Hugos for next year in the dramatic categories, I'm going to be thinking about Infinity Train. My husband and I just finished that whole series like a few weeks ago and it was so good. I mean, it is an animated cartoon kind of thing, but it is really fun and like actually kind of deep and just really well done. So I would definitely be nominating the last season that would be eligible really enjoyed it. Finally, let's talk about the short stories that I read this week. I read three short stories that have been nominated for the Best Short Story Hugo Award. And they were Little Free Library by Naomi Kritzer, Badass Moms and a Zombie Apocalypse by Ray Carson, and Open House on Haunted Hill by John Wiswell. And these were all delightful, honestly. I, I really enjoyed all of them. Um, Badass Moms and the Zombie Apocalypse. I actually found out that Uncanny has a podcast. So I actually listened to this on their podcast and it was fine. It was actually a birthing story, like giving birth with zombies around, like making it more dangerous. And I don't know, as a person that's given birth, I didn't super relate to the birthing experience described in this story. But um, I think probably every, you know, women have very different birthing experiences. And so it might have been more relatable for other women. Um, and it was just kind of a cool concept, but at the end of the day, it didn't really like do anything amazing for me. I didn't think it was, I don't know. I didn't enjoy it super a lot and I didn't think it did anything super amazing, but it was, it was good. I, I mean, definitely not bad at all. I like that it was trying to portray women in a zombie apocalypse. That was, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Little Free Library by Naomi Kritzer actually just won the Neb Nebula Award a few weeks ago. This was so cute. It was just really cute. I really enjoyed this one. It definitely, there was like an element of mystery that I was like really caught up in. And then just the conclusion and everything, it was, it was adorable. I do not begrudge this, the Nebula win that it just got. And then finally, I read Open House on Haunted Hill by John Wiswell. And this was also really cute. Very sweet, very endearing, definitely a feel good story. I think this just won the Locus Award. And I loved it. I think maybe out of all three, this one might have been my favorite this week. I'm not not really sure, but it was definitely really heartwarming and sweet and precious. And yeah, moving forward this week, I will be reading A Guide for Working Breeds by Vina Jimin Prasad. I don't know if I said that right. I'm so sorry. I will also be reading Metal Like Blood in the Dark by T. Kingfisher. And then finally, I will be reading The Mermaid Astronaut by Yoon Ha Lee. And all of these are available for to read for free online. I have the links below. So please join me in reading them this week if you want to. Um, Mermaid Astronaut sounds awesome. I think I'm most looking forward to that one just based on the title. I don't know anything about any of these other than the titles and the authors. So yeah, 
I am also going to be starting to go through the Lodestar category for the Hugo Awards, and I'm going to be trying to read one novel a week. So starting this week, I'm going to be reading Alatsue. You know, I've been saying Alatsue without like really giving it too much thought. I don't actually know how you pronounce it. I don't know if it's Alatso or Alatsue or something else, but I'm going to be reading that one. And then hopefully, I'm hoping because it's YA, it's going to be a really quick read. And then I can just do one every week until I've read the entire category. So if you want to join me in that too, feel free. I don't have links for that one, sorry. But it was instantly available at my library, so hopefully it will also be for you. And I think that's everything that I have to talk about. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.